Welcome to an hour of HealthMade Radio. HealthMade is a community for natural health seekers where we educate people about common health conditions and share extensive research on the most effective natural health treatments and promote legislation that protects our health freedoms. A core concept belief is an innate intelligence and healing power of the body, and if properly supported spiritually, emotionally, and nutritionally, it can find its way back to health. HealthMade Radio will bring information from integrative health experts throughout the world. Check us out at healthmade.co. Health is what you make it. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld, and I will be your host. Today's guest is Dr. Chris Shade. Born in a toxic steel town, Dr. Shade created Quicksilver Scientific to combat the environmental toxicity he personally experienced. Inspired by philosophy, guided by science, and driven to create, he patented a mercury speciation diagnostic process to analyze human toxicity. In addition, he created Quicksilver Delivery Systems nanoparticle technology to increase the bioavailability of supplements and protocols leading to higher efficacy products without the prick of a needle. For more than a decade, Dr. Shade has worked alongside practitioners to fine-tune a system and its applications to restore, maintain, and advance health. Dr. Shade is regularly sought out to speak as an educator on the topics of mercury, environmental toxicities, neuroinflammation, immune dysregulation, and the human detoxification system for practitioners and patients in the United States and internationally. He has helped corporate executives, professional athletes, celebrities, children with autism, patients with chronic immune disorders, and more. He strives to evolve the way the medical industry delivers care, and he is perpetually broadening the way the world understands health. Um, Dr. Chris Shade, it's, it's such an honor to have you on the show today, and, and I'm, you know, the the subject that you'll be talking about is something that is becoming more and more important as the toxicity around us is just continually increasing. Absolutely. It's a pleasure to be here. And, uh, yeah, I do find that uh, my lecturing does not lose an audience as we grow and rapidly uh, move ourselves into the natural space and, unfortunately, remove ourselves somewhat from nature. And uh, as such, we need a lot of tools to be able to tune up and clean everything out. And, and one of the misunderstandings that I see a lot with people is how detoxification really works. I mean, they, they look upon, uh, they, they take an herb and they think I'm taking milk thistle and now I'm detoxifying or I'm getting colonic or do coffee enema and that's all I need for detoxification. I mean, I, how, what does detoxification, what does it involve and, and what, what are some of the caveats that, that people run into? Yeah, I mean, that's that's exactly it. You see people that uh, grab basically one little part of detoxification and they think that it's going to take care of everything. And they typically run into problems with that and uh, having kind of a myopic view and grabbing, you know, one part of the elephant and trying to do detoxification can sometimes lead to no results, but sometimes lead to bad results. So let's, you know, step back and look at the whole system. And you can look at it, uh, I like to call it microcosm, macrocosm. And microcosm is detoxification from a cell perspective. So you're a cell in the thyroid or in the brain. You have certain chemistry to link a toxin with one of the biomolecules that you produce. One of the most uh, well-known of these is called glutathione. And there's a couple biomolecules you produce that you can link on to these toxins. Then you have enzymes that produce that biomolecule. You have enzymes that do the linking between the biomolecule and the toxin. And then you have a shuttling system. And these are transporters at the cell membrane. And they will take the toxin conjugated to your biomolecule, we call it a toxin conjugate, and they'll push it out of the cell. And as long as your cell is doing that and pushing away, pushing away, pushing away, the cell can be free from the toxic manifestation of that chemical. So the chemical has the ability to interfere in some of the enzymatic reactions in your body or to bind onto proteins and 
stop their activity. That's the action of toxicity or the toxic action of that chemical. So at this microcosmic, meaning the cell level, we're pushing away, pushing away. And we're pushing out of the cell and into what's called the matrix, where it joins into the lymph and then joins into the blood. So now we're at a macrocosmic level. So we've kicked out of the cell and we're circulating through the blood. Now, the macrocosmic detoxification is something that was called drainage in Europe or lavage, which means you know, washing uh, in French. And the drainage is the filtration of those circulating fluids. And that filtration takes place in the liver, in the kidneys, some directly from the blood into the GI, and some from the blood out through the skin in the sweat. So you need to be able to kick out of the cells or think a little bit larger that out of the tissues into the blood, essentially, and then filter out of the blood. And if you're only doing one part of this, you can run into problems. Now, at a cell level, some of the things that we take that we think are good for detoxification, I, I like to use lipoic acid as an example of this because lipoic acid is known to be able to detoxify metals, detoxify mold toxins. It's supposed to clear out your liver. And it does get the tissues to push the toxins into the blood. Now, if we're talking about metals, say we just pushed the metals out into the blood and they're circulating through the blood. Well, now you better hope that your filters are working because if they're not working, those metals are going to start circulating around in the blood. And if they're not filtered out, they're going to find a new home in your body. And unfortunately, they tend to find the homes that are most inflamed, meaning there's already some damage or repair type of process going on there. So why would they not be filtered out? Now, the liver is where we see the sort of nexus of the whole system. It does the most of all of the filtration. It's got the largest amount of detox work to do, and it's really well set up to do that, but it needs to have the proper directionality. And directionality is like a series of doors. It's like coming in the front door of a house and then going out the back door. And here the directionality is, the toxin conjugate or a raw toxin, one that hasn't been conjugated, being pulled into the liver, any necessary steps for detoxification continue there, and then very importantly, and this is where things break down, the toxin conjugate has to move into the bile flow. And bile flow, bile is what leaves the liver, it's this green liquid that we associate with emulsifying the fats in our meal and helping us digest. But it is also the bile tree, which is, think of it like uh, a root system, uh, but draining out of the liver, the roots collecting together into the trunk called the common bile duct. So every one of the cells drains this green fluid, and that green fluid has all your toxins because there's transporters that push from the hepatocyte, which is the liver cell, into the bile flow, and they push bile salts and toxins together. So if you're not pushing bile, you're not pushing toxins. And those flow down into the GI tract and then should go out to the sewage treatment plant. Now, there's two ways that can go wrong. One is those bile transporters can get blocked, and they can get blocked by, unfortunately, stress. And they can also get blocked by inflammation. And those stop you from pushing that bile out. And then the other way that you can have things go wrong is that you push toxins down into the GI tract, but you then reabsorb them. Remember, your GI tract is there to absorb things. And in certain cases, you start absorbing things that you didn't want to absorb. Now, some toxins are just good at getting in. And other times, if you have GI problems, you get what's called leaky gut where you start absorbing a lot of stuff that you didn't want to bring in the first place. A lot of things, you, a lot of these things that get absorbed there cause inflammation, especially in the liver, and then can block that flow of detoxification. But the stress component is a big one. And people, you know, especially really ambitious type A types, they think, oh, I'm just going to detox myself really hard. These are the same people that say, oh, I'm just going to go meditate really hard. 
These are things that require us to get into a more relaxed state. Because when you're stressed, you're in a mode called sympathetic autonomic mode, which comes with it the term fight or flight. So when you're in fight or flight situations, your, autonom your autonomic nervous system manages your energy such for you to run away from a situation or to fight. And so you don't do things like detoxification. And so you chronically start blocking the drainage of the liver. So now, if we rewind all that, it's most important to make sure that our livers are moving, you have bile flow going, you're relaxed, and then you can think about moving things out of the tissue. And then we can take things like lipoic acid for kicking out of the tissue. So then you'll ask, well, how do we get the liver moving? And what about that thing with the reabsorption in the GI tract? How do we deal with that stuff? Yeah, there's, so, a, yeah, there's so many different aspects of detoxification that people don't recognize all the different steps that, that it involves and that it's a whole process. We, we're just going to take a quick break. Uh, you're here listening to Health Made Radio, and I'm uh, chatting with Dr. Chris Shade about detoxification. Welcome back to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld. I'm here with Dr. Chris Shade. Uh, he is the owner of Quicksilver Scientific, and uh, he's probably one of the leaders, I would say, in, in the world in regards to detoxification and how to detoxify properly. And uh, uh, Dr. Chris, you're going through beautifully how you know that that whole process going from the microcosm to the macrocosm. And, uh, and then moving through, you know, people then detoxifying th from the cells and going into the extracellular matrix, you know, the, uh, the fluid that bathes the cells. And it's then, uh, if we're lucky, moving then into uh, the, uh, the liver and then through the liver cells and into the bile duct and then uh, hopefully moving it down then into the intestinal tract. But then, like you mentioned, we have these issues and it's becoming more and more, especially with all the exposures of GMO and you know, all these different pathogens of leaky gut, where we then have this reabsorption of, of these, these toxins that we are then trying to get rid of, and it just keeps recirculating. So how, how do we solve that? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> it's funny, you know, it, the sort of Western mind approaches. You know, if I gave you these things and I say, well, there's throwing from the cell into circulation, there's processing through the liver, and then there's binding in the gut. And binding is the use of uh, things like charcoal to grab the toxin once it gets to, down to the GI tract. And unfortunately, the way people go is they work on the cells first, and they ignore the liver and the GI tract. But really, we want to go backward with this whole thing in terms of safety. So... We said different reactions will throw things into the blood. The liver will process them, dump them with the bile to get down to the GI tract, but then they resorb. So you want something that's going through the GI tract that can grab these things and hold on to them and take them all the way through to fecal excretion. So the most simple of these is charcoal. Uh, and then there are things like zeolites and bentonite clay, uh, Fibers itself from the diet has some binding capacity. There's a product called Kytosan, which is derived from shellfish but isn't allergic. And then there's a product that we make called IMD, intestinal metal detox, and that's specifically for metal. And so each one of these different binders has sort of an affinity, uh, sort of a window of affinity for all of the environmental chemicals that are out there and the biological chemicals that are out there. And it's really good at absorbing some of, them, some of them, but not all of them. Probably the broadest spectrum binder would be activated charcoal. If you're going to do nothing else, make that one. But if you want a really good spread of binders, what we do in our product, Ultra Binder, has charcoal, zeolite, hydrazan, IMD, and then you want things in there to help nourish the lining of the GI tract. And so we use uh, acacia gum, which is a, a natural tree resin that's uh, used as an emulsifier, but it's very healing to the lining of the GI tract, and it's a prebiotic that feeds bifidobacteria. And we also use a little bit of aloe. So we have this cocktail of binders that takes those toxins and makes sure you don't reabsorb them. 
But there's another great thing that charcoal in, uh, in particular does, and that's binding something called endotoxin. As you just mentioned, uh, there is when you have leaky gut, you absorb a lot of bad chemicals from your GI tract, but one of them is called endotoxin, and they're little pieces and parts of the cell membranes of certain bacteria. And the problem with them is that the immune system reads them in your blood, and it thinks that the actual live bacteria have gotten into the blood, and it sounds this great loud inflammatory alarm and turns up the, instead of fire extinguishers, there, it's more like gasoline hoses, and it's trying to turn up inflammation to kill this invading bacteria. And unfortunately, this does a lot of damage to the bodies, and uh, it is especially damaging to the detoxification system because when you need to do something like that, like kill a bacteria, you do turn up pro-oxidant inflammation. You're making peroxides and bleaches out of your cells to kill things. But it turns out detoxification is the fundamental opposite. It's an antioxidant activity, and it uses things like glutathione that I mentioned before, which is your most potent antioxidant in your body. And so if it thinks it needs to inflame, it turns down the antioxidant system and with it the detoxification system. And then the toxins that are in your body become synergistically toxic with the endotoxin. Because remember, from the cell perspective, we want the cell to push the toxin out, push away, push away, push away, so that the toxin does not strike the active sites in the cell where it can damage the cell. But if you just turn down the protection system, which is this antioxidant detoxification system, now the toxins that are in there can get in more deeply and be more toxic. And then that endotoxin is also one of the things that most acutely blocks the drainage or the uh, toxin processing and bioflow aspect of your liver. And going back down to the GI tract, charcoal is one of the things that binds endotoxin in the GI tract so you don't absorb it. All right, so we've got three compartments that we have to work on. We've got the cell, we've got the liver, we've got the GI. From the GI, we're going to work with the binders, and that's actually your safest first move. There's almost no side effects with that, except that you can get some constipation from these binders, but that's pretty easily dealt with with magnesium supplementation or uh, also going to some of the herbals like senna and buckthorn for opening up that, that, uh, that GI drainage. So then we're working backward up into the liver. And in the liver, fortunately, we can go back to uh, the sort of uh, the, the way that people got alcohol in the early 1900s. It was also the panacea of the, of the Western world at the time. And those were digestive bitters. Digestive bitters and the bitter compounds in them, like gentian, uh, bitters like dandelion, these have uh, an effect on your bitter receptors in your mouth and also effect on bitter receptors that are throughout the body, including the stomach, the pancreas, and the liver. And that effect is to turn up bioflow and drainage of the gallbladder. So this is one of the reasons it was used uh, in some of the armies, in fact, things like Angostura bitters that are in all the cocktail bars, uh, those were developed by a guy in the Army who, uh, I think he was down in the Caribbean, and he was trying to keep his, uh, his, you know, his whole retinue there as healthy as possible, and he came up with this one thing with his doctors there that would help the most people, and uh, that was a bitters formula to keep them draining all the time. So bitters are really uh, fundamental, and uh, my wife always likes to say that we've gotten way too accustomed to the flavors of sweet and salt, and we need to get bitter back into our palate as one of the main things that we eat because it helps that drain. Now, there's another compound that we use a lot in, in the natural health world, especially the more sophisticated uh, aspects of German biomedical chemistry or ger German biomedical treatments, and that's the use of phosphatidylcholine. Phosphatidylcholine is derived 
from lecithin, and some people will just take lecithin as a supplement, although a lot of the lecithin that's soy-based has a lot of negative chemicals in it. But the purified phosphatidylcholines were used in injectable and oral form, and one of the aspects of bioflow is indeed phosphatidylcholine. And so supplementing phosphatidylcholine will keep your bio flowing well, because if you don't have enough phosphatidylcholine, uh, you will not get the bile flow, and you'll be trying to take it from the cell membranes in the liver, and you'll start damaging the cell membranes in the liver. So phosphatidylcholine feeds the liver structure, it feeds the bile flow, and it turns out it also feeds all the cell membranes and the, and the cell uh, membranous organelles like the mitochondria throughout the whole body. And it's also a source for making acetylcholine in the brain, which is essential for concentration. So we've got binders in the GI tract. We've got things to mobilize the bile and the liver. We've got the bitter compounds, and then we've got phosphatidylcholine. And then we're ready to work at a cellular level to upregulate this uh, cellular detoxification. And that and that's exactly. usually yeah that's usually the issue that I see is that people don't want to get in you know they take these substances and because I we want to clean the cells and obviously we're all made out of cells but they don't recognize that you like you're doing you got to backtrack I mean you 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 got to open up the pathway where we're then dumping the toxins into you know if that's not open yeah you know, I'm trying to get things out of the cells and it's not going to get anywhere. Yeah, so uh, we're going yeah, to take a quick break. Uh, you're here listening to HealthMade Radio. I'm, I'm here with Dr. Chris Shade. Welcome back to HealthMade Radio. I'm here with Dr. Chris Shade. We're, we're discussing proper detoxification because that is this is an issue that is uh, so many people have the wrong idea as to how to go about doing it. And it's it's a very step-by-step process. And I I know... Uh, Dr. Shade, with his company, has uh, has created a, a very basic program that will move you through these steps very scientifically. And you know, you, you're, you're mentioning starting then with with the the gut, you know, with the charcoal, and then uh, supporting the liver with with the uh, with bitters, and then phosphatidylcholine to support, and also the the bile, the production of the bile, so that we don't. And destroy. We don't take phosphatidylcholine from the cell wall membranes uh, that contain a lot of phosphatidylcholine, or even in in our brain. Yeah, we, we have a huge amount there. So we want to make sure that we spare that nutrient, so that when we detoxify, we we don't deplete other areas. And um, and and yeah. So this this is key. I I really appreciate what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> Once you see it all, it, it, it makes a lot of sense, and you can see all the different ways that people go wrong. Uh, and before we talk about upregulating in the cell, we should we should take a moment to to talk about uh, stress in the autonomic nervous system, uh, because one of the things that the liver can do, and that's to block the door out from the liver into the GI tract, and when it does that, it's starts to accumulate toxins in the liver cell, and it starts to also accumulate bile salts. So bile salts for making bile are something that you uh, conserve as well, and you, you absorb them in the GI tract, any that you haven't used in di- digestion, and you bring them into the blood, and they get to the liver, the liver harvests them, as well as synthesizing its own. So it's constantly trying to regulate bile salts, and it's trying to regulate toxin levels in the liver cells. And if the door out, the bile drainage gets blocked, the cells get very toxic. And then what do they do? They dump all that bile salt and toxin back into the blood. So, uh, well, I call it uh, a liver back flush. And because it's got this sort of pressure relief sensor as to when that stuff builds up. So what would block it coming out? Well, you could block it by not having enough phosphatidylcholine, so you can't make enough bioflow. But stress and 
uh, and chronic inflammation block it as well. And so I said endotoxin from the GI can block it, endotoxin from chronic infections, be they UTI infections or jaw infections like cavitations or root canals, nasal, chronic nasal infections, all those could block it. But the thing that we miss is this aspect of stress, of constantly being in fight or flight. And uh, frankly, I learned that from friends of mine who were overly ambitious and they'd try to work really, really hard. And they would get to this point where they would burn out. Now, I find that their adrenals were burned out, but their adrenals were burned out because their bioflow was burned out. Then they weren't digesting well, they weren't getting enough energy, and they weren't detoxifying. And so I would have to help train them to get into more of what's called a parasympathetic autonomic tone. So the autonomic nervous system is the automatic nervous system. It's behind the scenes. You're not consciously regulating it unless you're some sort of perfect yogi. It's all going on on its own. It's controlling heart rate, breath rate, and it's controlling where blood flow goes and where nutrients go and which processes get favored. And so it's got a yin and yang like all things in life do. And the yang is this sympathetic fight or flight type of thing where you're stuck in that I got to do something right now and all energy is going to it because my survival depends on it. And then when you relax back, you go into parasympathetic. Now, that's rest, digest, repair, regenerate, detoxify. And it's in that state, in that calm state, is when you do this detoxification and regeneration. In fact, there's a great author, right now I forget his name, but he has a book called Why Don't Zebras Get Ulcers? And it's because the lion comes for them, they freak out, they go into fight or flight, they run away, hopefully they get away, and when they're, they're away from the lion and it's all all right, they just lay down and chill out and they go back into the other side. But we've gotten ourselves in a way where we're perceiving everything as this existentialist crisis. We're perceiving our relationships with our family, with our, uh, our work environment. We're viewing the bills coming into us. We're viewing traffic on the road, all in this fight or flight type dilemma. And we're locking down our systems. We're aging ourselves quickly. We're failing to detoxify. We're failing to regenerate. That's why it's so true when they say that stress kills. Yeah, and the, so how are we going to deal? Yeah, the issue is, I mean, like you're saying, we, we're dealing with inflammation. We're dealing with uh, all these different pathogens. We're dealing with being in a sympathetic world. You know, all of those are then uh, taking us away from regeneration and detoxification. Yeah, so yeah, how, how are we going to turn that around? Yeah, and uh, really we need to learn to relax in our own environment, be comfortable in our own skin. And when I'm telling people to do this, they, they have to first be conscious of all the ways in which they contract around their life. They have to be conscious of the different stresses in their body. And then they need systems to unwind that and find out what real relaxation is. And so I recommend to people Qigong, Tai Chi. Tai Chi is probably my favorite because it's movement and relaxation combined. Breathing exercises like pranayama, yogas. And then there's even technological things. You have all the binaural beats that are available. Like originally there was the Holosync and now there's... Uh, a number of free or, you know, low pay apps where you can get these different uh, programs and you put on headphones and they're playing some relaxing music or beach waves or rain. And behind the scene, there's this little different beat going on between the right and the left ear. And it meditates you and it puts you into a relaxing space. Or then you've got the heart math work where they work on heart rate variability and uh, they have you breathing with different patterns. There's a lot of good tech. I've got a great heart rate variability monitor uh, that I use that's called the BioStrap. And that will track during the day sort of how relaxed versus stressed I am. And at night, it will track your regeneration. And if you're sleeping well, this stress level that's 
evident in your heart rate starts getting better and better, and then you go back into your day. So there's a lot of ways that we can approach this movement into relaxing into our skin and into our situation, and that is part of what needs to be done. And I believe you and I will be talking about the endocannabinoid system, and from uh, a supplement perspective, uh, CBD is one of the most effective supplements for lowering that sympathetic overdrive, and the neurotransmitter associated with that is called glutamate, which is the calming one. The opposite is called GABA, and there's a balance between the two, and you start getting very glutamate dominant when you're very stressed. Now, this is important. You also get very glutamate dominant when you're toxic. In fact, mercury's main site of its neurotoxic activity is the glutamate receptors in the brain where it makes them hyperfire. So that's similar to us getting overly stressed to a small stressor coming in. We can do that from our own programming where we start overreacting to things, but the toxins themselves start creating this overreactivity. And when we talk about that more in a humanistic way and people's hyperreactivity to each other, we talk about a toxic response, like we talk about toxic relationships. And there is an actual physiology to that uh, that's both in our programming and in the toxins effect on us. And CBD is one of the most effective supplement ways to lower that hyperfiring of the glutamate receptors and restore balance. And I know in my own experience running a high-stress company, uh, it's once I started making and consuming a lot of CBD, I lost that anxiety response, thankfully, where I was just freaking out about stuff and I didn't know what to do. And now I can handle things a lot better. Yeah, it's, it's such an amazing um, substance and the impact that it has on the brain, on the the receptors, on that inflammatory uh, process that we are d continually dealing with. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. I'm here with Dr. Chris Shade. You're listening to Health Made Radio. Welcome back to Health Made Radio. I'm Dr. Michael Carlfeld. I'm here with Dr. Chris Shade uh, talking about detoxification. And, and you were talking a little bit about mercury and, and toxins. And I know mercury is, is one of the uh, heavy metals and toxins that you really focus quite a bit on. And I'm, and I'm curious why. Why? Because we're exposed to so much and mercury seems to be such a big player. Why is that? Right. Well, mercury is extremely potent. Uh, as you get into uh, looking at the aspects of the system that get poisoned by metals, uh, a lot of the defense chemistry in your body is based on these reduced sulfur groups called thiols. And all the heavy metals bind to these thiols. And when they do this, they damage your detoxification abilities, your antioxidant control. They damage a lot of cell-to-cell -cell communication. They damage a number of enzymes and metabolism. Uh, the list goes on and on, these different things that are controlled by these thiol groups. And nothing binds to them and blocks them more effectively than mercury does. And so it's a very, very strong metabolic toxin throughout the cells. But then we just spent a bunch of time talking about the neurologic system and our uh, perception of stress in our body and, uh, and, you know, whether we're feeling super stressed out or not. And if we're stressed out, we then uh, block all detoxification. Well, mercury acts very, very strongly on the neurological system, and by hyperfiring the glutamate receptors, they put you into kind of a constant anxiety response. So at one level, mercury is causing this neurological anxiety that's blocking detoxification in the rest of your cells, and at the cellular level, it's blocking a lot of energy generation. One of the places these styles and the damages are really at a high concentration is in the cell's mitochondria, where you make a lot, where you make all the cell energy. There's also a high concentration of them in the thyroid and all the chemistry that comes out or, or deals with thyroid chemicals. And so it blocks thyroid. Thyroid makes energy. And then 
it, mercury works on kidneys and adrenals and wears them out too. So the most, the two biggest signs that you may have a problem with mercury are fatigue and anxiety. And that's a lot of what is going on with people these days. So yeah. it has a very potent ability. You have a lot of women, uh, well, I mean, a lot of people, they're dealing with hypothyroidism and you know, Hashimoto's. Uh, I mean, it seems like pretty much every everyone and their neighbor dealing with Hashimoto's. So uh, instead of then uh, dealing with it just with medications, you should really go after then mercury and heavy metals that are then interfering with the function of that gland and then maybe then in that way be able to resolve the hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's? Oh, yeah. There's so many different, uh, there's so many toxins that affect that and uh, in a similar way to mercury and, and the other uh, heavy metals that it's such a no-brainer to go for a detoxification strategy first and see what's left over after that. Because once you go down the path of starting to supplement thyroid hormones, then you're going to start having atrophy in the thyroid. And so you have to make sure you've exhausted a lot of these really simple, uh, well, I mean, detoxification is difficult, but it's a lot less difficult than supplementing thyroid hormone for the rest of your life. So you really should check all these things out before you just accept that, oh, gee, I just have a bum thyroid. And, and where are some of the sources of these heavy metals? I mean, let's, let's pick mercury since we're talking about it. What, where, where do we get it from? So mercury, the, the biggest sources these days are your dentistry, and that's the dental mercury amalgam. These are, it's a mercury, silver, copper, zinc amalgam that was used to fill cavities. And 50% of that metal in there was mercury. And so... Uh, and that mercury is evaporating off the surface of the teeth, and you're inhaling it. It's going into your blood that way. At the same time, you're swallowing a bunch of the corrosion products from it, and they are polluting your GI tract and blocking detoxification there. So the dentistry is one thing. Now, less and less mercury fillings are going in now, and more and more of the different deposits are going in. Now, fish is the other biggest source, and uh, fish, I, I like as a protein. I think it's a, a great food, but it bioaccumulates mercury. And that means that from the bottom of the food chain to the top of the food chain, there's this huge magnitude of difference. In fact, if you go from like the level of mercury in an anchovy or sardine, compare that to a large swordfish, it can be as much as 10,000 fold different between the two. So when you eat from the top of the food chain, and this happened to Tony Robbins, he talked about that, and uh, I, I helped him set up his detoxification. He went from being a vegan to being kind of paleo, and all he ate was tuna and swordfish. And he ate such high mercury levels with those very high trophic level or high up the food chain fish, that he got acute mercury poisoning from that. In fact, uh, the CEO of IMAX Theaters had that problem as well. Uh, who's that comedian from New York, kind of raunchy guy? Howard Stern, he just came out saying that he had mercury poisoning as well. And uh, I've, I've helped uh, treat a number of CEOs and, and uh, you know, other celebrities that thought that eating fish like that was the good way to go, and they got extremely toxic from that. There's a few other sources, but they're not as big. Uh, probably the worst one, it's not out there a lot, but... Uh, Skin whitening creams, if those come from Asia or Latin America, those have high levels of mercury because mercury is really good at killing melanocytes that you don't make any melanin. And so people that value white skin tend to have those problems. And I know there's a lot of controversy also in regards to vaccines. And I mean, are, are there mercury and, and metals in that as well then? Well, mercury has been taken out of the vaccines. Uh, it was in there theoretically as an antimicrobial, so you could do multi doses from a single vial. Uh, you know, vaccinate 10 kids with a single vial, and that was just for convenience. But uh, it likely also uh, functioned as an adjuvant, even though it wasn't listed as an adjuvant. It's used as an adjuvant in 
uh, veterinary medicine. Uh, adjuvant meaning it irritates the immune system, so the immune system has an inflammatory response to the proteins from the virus that are in the vaccine. So the mercury is taken out because of all the hubbub around that. And uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of aluminum in there now, and the aluminum acts as an adjuvant uh, as well. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of uh, bad uh, vaccine uh, bad vaccine reactions as a result of the aluminum. But uh, for the most part, the mercury is not there. It's in some of the flu vaccines, uh, but not the pediatric ones. And from my understanding is that, uh, I mean, you, you have one impact with, with mercury and then you have another sort of impact with aluminum. But when, you're, when you combine exposure with, with both of them, you know, the, the impact on the neurological impact gets so much worse uh, when you're exposed to both. Is, am I correct with that? Uh, yeah, likely. They're, they're coming at you from different angles. Some of these things... Some of the metal combinations and their synergistic damages have been well proven. Uh, you know, mercury with nickel, mercury with uh, excess copper, mercury with lead uh, have these synergistic toxicities, uh, cadmium as well. Uh, the mercury aluminum, I haven't seen the data directly, but they do, you know, if Often what you'll see with two different toxins is one toxin damages the defenses in the body to another toxin, and then that second toxin gets full rain in there. Uh, and for example, uh, mold toxins tend to block NRF2, which is uh, as we are tracking up from the GI to the liver to upregulating cellular defense, the trigger NRF2 is what responds to stress in the cell and turns up all the detoxification chemistry, and then the cell is able to conjugate the toxin and kick it out. Well, NRF2 gets blocked by mold. So if you have mold and uh, mold and mercury exposure, the mold is blocking the defenses against the mercury. Then you get uh, more of both. And there's probably something like that with uh, uh, aluminum and mercury. I just don't know the mechanism. Yeah, and, and, and that's a key is that they... All these things, they, they work synergistically against you. And so you, you get to start and unravel at some point, you know, which, which is what you mentioned. So it seems, you know, as, as we're wrapping, wrapping up, I mean, for proper detoxification, I mean, you, you get to start and binding uh, in the gut. And with that, you know, you, I know you have a product that's, that's fantastic for that. And uh, charcoal being one of the you know the the key component that is kind of a, a well a, a wide spectrum binder and uh, also helps to bind to endotoxins because you know these infectious agents in the gut can really interfere them with your ability to detoxify and and it also puts you in that inflammatory state and then secondly you need to work then on on the bile flow you know to make sure that that proper detoxification takes place through the bile so you, you open up that flow, and uh, then the next step is then to uh, work then on the cells themselves and, and support uh, the enzymes that produce glutathione and, and provide the glutathione and, and, and take glutathione in such a form so that it can easily then penetrate the cell wall membrane uh, because it's such a complex molecule, uh, it needs to be broken down before it then gets reassembled in the cell. So if we can do it more in a liposomal form, it can penetrate more easily. So and all, all of this, and while making sure that you control inflammation, you control stress, and also you control your, your intake or exposure to all these heavy metals. So it's, it's a lot to think of at one time, but it's crucial to think of all these things together as a package because you can't just do one at a time. Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. Well, uh, Dr. Shader, it's been such a such an honor to have you on the show, and, and I so appreciate that you the mission that you have to uh, to promote healthy detoxification and promote health uh, because we we need that more and more and more we're recognizing that the medical model is not enough to uh, to mitigate the damage that's being done uh, from what we're eating what we're exposed to uh, and just our our living nowadays 
So thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Shade. I, I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking about it. Uh, I'm always here to talk more. Wonderful. Uh, that is it for today. You're listening to Health Made Radio. Uh, make sure to check us out at healthmade.co. Health is what you make it.